Hello, Laverne here, and thank you for joining me. In this video, I'm going to be discussing the topic of slavery as it pertains to the Old Testament. And the reason I'm doing this is actually in response to the many videos on YouTube where mainly atheists have made comments such as they are themselves morally superior to God and to Jesus for the very reason that God condoned uh, slavery and Jesus did not condemn it. Uh, as well, this is in response to the many comments I've had people leaving on my videos as well. Now, to begin with, there are two types of slavery talked about in the Old Testament. The one type is that of when uh, uh, one Jew would own another Jew. And this was actually called a bond servant. And this happened when somebody either sold themselves into slavery because uh, they wanted to enter into a contract either simply so that they had work provided for them or because there was something they wanted to receive at the end of the contract, such as the case of Jacob, who wanted to receive the hand uh, of uh, the daughter of the man he would be working for. He wanted to receive her hand in marriage. And so he entered into a contract for six years. Then we have people who uh, incurred debt, and because they were unable to uh, pay down the debt, they would enter uh, uh, into a contract basically where they become the slave. Now we need to keep in mind that the uh, Hebrew language at that time, the vocabulary was only somewhere I've heard between anywhere from between 15,000 and 40,000. That's how many words were in their vocabulary compared to today where we have a million words. So they didn't have a lot of different terms to describe the different uh, uh, you know, people that they worked for, they often referred to the person uh, that they worked for as their master, even though they were themselves not a true slave. Now, the reason I bring this up is because today we have people who are on welfare or social assistance, and in some states and some provinces, people must work in order to receive that assistance. Now, if all we had was the vocabulary of what the Hebrews had, and if we were living in that uh, time period or, or something similar to it, the person who is on welfare, collecting assistance, but having to work for it, would have been considered and would be considered today a bond servant. In essence, they would be a slave. So we need to keep vocabulary and context and so on. We need to keep all these things in consideration when we're talking about the slavery in the Old Testament. Now that's the one type, that's the least offensive of the different types. Uh, actually, before I go on, I, I do want to also stress the fact that today, our uh, culture is very different, and I'm not so sure which one I would consider to be least offensive or least immoral. Consider that uh, today, we are encouraged and enticed to incur as much debt as what we can. And then what happens if it becomes too much? We simply declare bankruptcy. And in most cases, in many cases, that debt is simply erased. And there's no penalty to, uh, to the person who incurred the debt. But what happens is when uh, X amount of individuals do this, it causes businesses to go bankrupt. And then when so many businesses go bankrupt, this in turn uh, causes the debt to fall on to the government. And so today we have governments that are heavily in debt. And sooner or later, the bottom is going to fall out. And when that happens, it's going to make the dirty 30s look like a walk in the park. And this is all because of our attitude towards debt. Our attitude towards debt is far different from that of the Old Testament. And I am not so sure, I'm not convinced that our way is a better way. They simply had a different way of looking at debt back then. And it's up for debate which way uh, really works better, uh, especially when you consider the, uh, the, the stakes for the nation. Now, looking at the other type of uh, uh, slavery, this is the type when one nation would go to war against another, overtake it, conquer it, and take the populace as its slaves. Yes, this was condoned by God. And the reason is because God used suffering for a number of different reasons. He would use suffering, and this included slavery, to discipline people, to test them, 
to teach them and to refine them. And sometimes he used it as a way to build their character so that they could be used in order to benefit the nation, or in order to benefit God's people. Examples of this is Joseph. Joseph was sold into slavery by his brothers. He then was able to work his way up into a position of great power. And from that position, he brought his family out of uh, a place of famine into the nation of Egypt, where they uh, were to establish the actual uh, nation of Israel. So through the slavery and through uh, the conditions and the refining that happened there, Joseph became a great leader and it had tremendous uh, significance to the nation of Israel. We also see uh, in the story of Esther, here's a woman who was gathered up with a, a number of other women, basically slaves, who were then uh, instructed in the ways of the court and presented to the king. The king then chose Esther to be his queen. Then from that position of uh, being the queen, she was able to save all of the Jews who were living in that nation because there was a man who conspired and came very close to exterminating all of the Jews in that nation. And if she had never gone through everything she did, she would never have been in a position to save the Jews. We see Nehemiah, who was a slave brought up to the position of cupbearer. Same kind of thing. He had influence with the king, was able to receive funding so that he could return to Israel or return to Jerusalem and rebuild the wall. Uh, the prophet Daniel is another example of a slave brought up into a position of prominence. So God used suffering and slavery to build character, to refine people. And sometimes he just does it to discipline people, to break them so that from that position of brokenness, they, were, they will return to him, will return to God. Now, in the case of Jesus, Jesus did not come into the world to uh, assert and overthrow governments. The Roman government, uh, the Roman Empire, which was very much dependent on slavery, was not the reason that Jesus came. Jesus, though, through his teachings, has taught us that slavery is wrong. Now, when we understand the teachings of Jesus, we see that he did not condemn abortion. He did not condemn infanticide. He did not condemn uh, pedophilia. But we know that he was against these things. We know this because of his teachings. We know that he taught we were not to take advantage of children. We are, we, we are not to destroy their innocence. He taught that we are to obey the, the uh, Ten Commandments. And this includes thou shalt not commit murder. Thou shalt not kill the innocent. And this includes killing the, those who are yet uh, unborn. Abortion, in other words. Jesus taught us that we are to love our neighbors and to love our enemy. Who are our neighbors and our enemies? Well, they are everybody that's in the world. If they are not our neighbor, they are our enemy. But if we are to love them both, then this means we would never place anyone into slavery. We would never allow anyone to become our slave if we loved everyone. So we see that through the teachings of Christ, he actually did teach these things. The problem is people, many people simply have not understood it. Now, my final point is that God actually has had, great, has had a great effect on slavery. There are many atheists who would like to take credit for it and say that it is man himself who has abolished slavery in places such as North America and England. But I tell you, it was not man. Well, actually, I'll take that back. While man had a hand in it, it was because of God working in their hearts. God, by way of the Holy Spirit, worked in the hearts of men and women. And these men and women, men such as Abraham Lincoln, and the men and women who worked the Canadian Railroad, and other men and women who, because of the Holy Spirit working in them, they worked and, uh, and many times suffered greatly in order to abolish slavery. But it should be no doubt in your mind whatsoever that God was at work, and it was in his perfect timing that it was abolished. All right, uh, I thank you for listening, and I look forward to your comments. Till next time, peace and blessings.